So first of all, thank you, Minister, for um, having time, spending time with us. Um, you have a long career in the Balkans, so you could have a very good perspective of uh, where the region is going. So how do you see things? Where are the Western Bal Balkans headed to? The region is moving in the right direction, but not at the right speed. I think that uh, we, the situation is good, but not as good as it could be and as it should be. And it's also not proportional to the amount of investment and attention that the European Union gives to the region. So uh, there are no reasons to be worried, but there are no reasons to be complacent either. What do you think this uh, slow speed is due to? Well, there are several reasons for, for that. Uh, the mo most important, as I see it, is that the European integration is not genuinely the number one priority. It is the number one priority in all the papers, and the leaders are saying the right things, but in real action, in daily politics, uh, you can see that for many of them, they, they do not guide their, their decisions, their steps, by the European integration as a, as a supreme goal. This is, I, I don't want to be, I mean, to, to, to generalize, but, uh, uh, Croatia managed to convince European Union that this is the number one priority. They undertook painful steps, but as a result, there was a consensus. Montenegro managed to, uh, again, convince that for the government, no, this is the number one priority. For the rest of the region, as much as they say that this is the num number one priority, when it comes to dealing with concrete issues, Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Ser Serbia, you see that uh, th they have different priorities, or, 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 or Macedonia. Again. Is it possible that one reason for this is that the enlargement is not a priority for the EU itself? No, right no, 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 no. Enlargement is one of the priorities for the European Union, but uh, it's not the European Union who, can bring the, who should bring the countries of the Western Balkans. It's the countries of the Western Balkans who should do their homework, mean, meaning reforms, who should change their systems who should build European standards. EU is ready to help them. EU uh, has the Commission for Enlargement, all the programs, all the support, but EU cannot do the homework for the countries there. The problem, of course, is that uh, compared to, the, to the, the Central Europe, the starting point in the Western Balkans has been more complicated. And I also, I don't want to blame, I understand that, uh, you know, when you still don't know what, what's the name of your country, where, where your country starts and where it ends, wh where is the border, uh, then it's diff difficult to imagine that European integration is number one priority. Number one priority is to, f to find your identity. So th that's also an objective reality that we have to take into account. But still, uh, successful integration process is about reforms, about meeting the, the, the benchmarks, about conditionality. It's not about you know, uh, lobbying the capitals, because this is, this is not a process based on political decision. Mm -hmm. This is a process which must be based on, on re results achieved on the ground, because membership in the European Union is not a gift, it's not a humanitarian gesture, it's not a charity. It's something that should make European Union stronger and more efficient. Mm -hmm. And if the country would theoretically join the EU without being prepared for it 100%, then it will hurt the country and it will weaken the European Union. I spoke to an analyst um, quite recently on the Western Balkans and he said that a big problem is that the European institutions as such are quite involved in the process, even um, in the face of uh, Commissioner Fule, they have quite innovative approaches to keep the, the momentum. But what lacks is support from the member states. Do you agree with this? Commissioner Fule is doing a tremendous, ex excellent job and he really uh, is trying to find even innovative ways to keep the ball rolling, uh, such as the high-level accession dialogue for Macedonia or other forms, just to make sure that we don't get stuck, even if there are problems or even if there are obstacles or blockages. When it comes to the member states, no one should be surprised that for them the priority is the consolidation of, of, of public finances uh, and the uh, stabilization of national currencies of euro. It's normal. So is there less enthusiasm for enlargement? Yes. Does it mean that enlargement is dead? No. It's here, but it's no longer featured so prominently. But 
the fact that EU, European Union member states are now more busy with their internal economic, social, financial agenda does not prevent the countries of the region of the Western Balkans from doing their homework. Mm -hmm. And what they should do is to be coming to our capitals, showing results. We have done this, we have changed this law, we have, we have uh, introduced this legislation in, in the name of European integration. And oh. the reaction will definitely be positive. But still, um, I spoke this summer to Montenegro's chief negotiator, Mr. Pajovic, and he said in terms that finally Montenegro received uh, a green uh, light for starting session negotiations, that there is a kind of waiting fatigue, that many of the countries in the region uh, are tired of waiting, and all these uh, phrases the European Union uses, like perspective, do your homework. I disagree. I don't think anyone is waiting. We we are in motion. Compared to last year, we, we see clear progress on side of Croatia, on side of Montenegro. We don't see progress, uh, well, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, but this is not for European Union to be blamed. I mean, they, they, when leaders clearly know what to do, and they, they know exactly because uh, the European Commission, through the pro annual progress reports, defines the situation and uh, identifies the steps to be taken. So if this, these steps are not taken, then obviously there is no progress. So you should not complain about about waiting if you haven't done your homework. Again, it's ve as, as simple as that. The Polish um, Institute for International Relations recently published a paper in which it says that the Visegrad group of which Slovakia is a member could do more sharing its experience. And because all of the countries in the group have very close relations to the Western Balkans, they could do something more. Do you agree with this? And if yes, what more could be done by the countries here? You can always do more uh, in everything you do. Uh, but there is no doubt that for Visegrad 4, uh, the Western Balkans is one of the priority regions. And we have a number of programs individually and as a group together to help the countries of the region uh, to basically go faster along the integration path. Our advantage is our fresh, successful, first-hand experience. Mm -hmm. And this is what we offer. And it depends on, on the countries of the region to what extent they are able and willing to use this offer. We have Visegrad 4 Fund, which has its programs for the Western Balkans, providing scholarships, but we are receiving their delegations. We are sending our experts. And they are doing this uh, technical experts level uh, work communication, which is so important because this is what the moves the countries forward. So I don't think we can do more in terms of commitment, in ter terms of prioritizing the, the enlargement of the Western Balkans on our political agenda. Uh, we are uh, providing as much money as we can afford. So I think uh, that uh, the V4 countries are definitely among the the leaders in promoting the enlargement. So for now, there's nothing more you can no, you do? You can always do more. You can okay. always do more. But again, uh, it takes two to tango. So it's, uh, it should also, our assistance should also be, in a way, demand driven. If there is uh, higher demand, then I'm sure that we will find m more programs, more experts and everything. The stick and the carrot approach. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not the stick and the carrot, but you can offer a lot, but if I mean, you have to find a reception to your offer. Okay. And we have to see that this or that program enjoy support, and then we will put more attention and eventually more resources into those programs. But it must not be like that we are coming and offering or s imposing our, our experience, our knowledge, our know-how on our Okay, partners. imposing, yeah. Now, now I understand what you mean. Um, uh, given the experience with Bulgaria and Romania, because you know that the two countries have this special mechanism in justice and home affairs, and unfortunately it is five years still, it is, it is there and it's going to stay. Do you think that given that experience, the um, accession criteria should be changed for the Western Balkans because they seem to have the same problems? You know, the accession criteria are set and I don't think they have to be changed. They might be fine-tuned and they are fine-tuned because the uh, European Union is evolving, it's a living organism, it's going through different uh, stages. Right now it's facing, of course, uh, the economic problems, financial problems. So obviously the, the 
the rules of the enlargement are not set in stone, they have to be adjusted flexibly. But this does not mean that we have to create new uh, conditions or new rules for new countries. Uh, but one lesson to be learned probably from the cases of Romania and Bulgaria is that it's really important to make sure that at the moment of entry, the country is 100% ready to be a member. Uh, because to, to offer the membership and to still have some mechanisms which are verifying, controlling, assessing, doesn't seem to be the proper, proper approach. So maybe this mechanism to be moved before membership. Exactly, exactly. And this is a prevailing opinion among the EU member states and also on the side of the European Commission. That means by the time of e the country's joining of the European Union, it must be clear that the, all, the, all the conditions are fulfilled, all the benchmarks are met, and therefore uh, it's a standard regime and not the uh, continuation of sort of monitoring. Do you agree with the opinion more and more analysts share uh, that Serbia is the key country for the success of the region, the European success of the region? I believe in individual approach. I believe in uh, countries being uh, judged on the basis of their merits, on, on the basis of their individual performance. There are bigger and smaller countries, but for the credibility of, of, of the process, it's really important that we judge each country on in individual merits. This is important. So I don't really understand the notion of key country. I, I, I think that if you de define someone uh, as a key country, it shows like that the country is more important than the other. This is, this is not the notion I, I share. We launched uh, the stability pact back in 1999. During Milosevic's time, Serbia was not part of it. Mm -hmm. At that time, Milosevic could not believe that there could be a regional initiative without Serbia being part of it. And it, it did happen. At the, as a consequence, a year later, Milosevic's regime was toppled and we had a democratic government. So I'm, I struggle to understand what this key country means. What does it mean? Shall we treat the country differently? Shall, shall we be more generous with the country or more demanding with the country? It means only that it's the bigger country in the region and it still seems to be hesitating which path to take and it still has some really tough relations with its neighbours, especially Kosovo. I, uh, well, Kosovo is a different story, a special story, which doesn't have much to do with the size of Serbia, but I really believe in regatta principle and not in key country principle, because that would mean that we have somehow to take the regional approach into consideration, which I, I am strongly believe it's a mistake. We don't have to judge countries on, on their individual basis according to their performance. So the Western Balkans shouldn't be uh, considered as a package? Definitely Whichever not. Whichever country succeeds, it should succeed. Absolutely, accede. absolutely. The Gata principle worked perfectly in Central Europe. And it's, uh, it's totally demotivating if you try to convey a message to a country that you have done your job, but sorry, you are too small, and we, you will have to wait for someone who has not done his own work yet, but it's more important to us. You know, mm -hmm. this is killing the European idea. We really have to, 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 to well, deal with countries and treat them and reward them uh, according to what they deserve individually. And finally, um, do you think that there is a risk because of what's happening in the European Union? And in some members, and I mean by some members, Hungary and Romania, who uh, kind of violated some democratic principles, that this could be discouraging the countries in the Western Balkans, that the European perspective and the European Union is not the role model anymore. And what is the role model? My, my, my answer to this question, because this is not the first time I hear this question, is show me a better model. Show me a better integration of real countries existing on this planet that has achieved higher level of democratic standards, economic performance and social uh, uh, protection of, of their citizens. There is none. So if you say, well, I, EU is not what it used to be, it's not so attractive, fine, that was the option. To be flying around independently, hanging in the air, Eurasian Union, Mediterranean Union, please, it's, it's the strategic choice of each, each individual country. European Union is not pushing any country into the European Union. But still, it's definitely the most prominent, most successful club of countries that has been moving and developing progressively. When you look at the EU today, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you see visible progress. And I say, this is the, by far the best perspective for the countries of the Western Balkans. 
Thank you very much, Minister. I thank you very much.